Well, hi there. We're here today to do something that we've never done before. This video and, and the videos that come after it are not going to make you feel better about genetics, like, oh, that's not as mysterious as I thought. They are going to teach you how to do genetics, okay? How to really understand it, how to master genetics. And so before we really get too deep into that, I want to give you guys a little bit of background about me. I am a reptile enthusiast. I really enjoy reptiles. I've studied them as a hobby my whole life. But professionally, I am a biologist and I am a biology educator. I can tell you from my research and my experience in the classroom that if you don't do something with the things that you're learning, you're not really going to be able to learn. I'm going to encourage you to take notes, ask questions down in the comments, and where possible, explain what you are learning to somebody else. Along the way, I'm going to ask you some questions. If you don't at least attempt to answer them, it will be very, very difficult for you to learn these things, and you're going to find that you're gonna get lost. By the end of this first lesson, you should understand the following terms, and it would be a very good idea to write them down, and as you start to understand them, to write out little definitions that'll help you remember. The terms are, DNA, gene, allele, chromosome, diploid, haploid, meiosis, sperm, egg, zygote, homozygous, and heterozygous. Oh snap, that's a lot of words, and we've got them for you right here. So we're gonna leave them up on the screen for a little bit in case you missed any of that. It sounds like a lot, but don't get overwhelmed. You'll have it by the end of this. If any of those words sounded crazy to you, what that really means is that you're in the right place. This, what I've been holding up till now, is a ball python. And this is what they look like normally. But sometimes they look like this, or like this, or like this. Ball pythons come in all kinds of different colors and patterns, and they're just amazing. They look so different because their genes are different. If you have any interest at all in maybe breeding animals someday, if you're a, a student of biology or just somebody who's curious and wants to understand the way the world works, then these videos are for you. These are Lego instruction books. If you've ever done a Lego set in your life, you know that these instruction booklets tell you which pieces to use and in what order so that you can build something in your body or the body of a snake, these instruction booklets are called DNA. Your DNA contains lots of different instruction books for building lots of different kinds of things. These individual books in your DNA are called genes. So like this is a gene, and this is another gene, and this is a gene, and this is a gene, and this is a gene, and they each code for different little things that all come together to make you. We've all got the same genes, but we've got different versions, like different flavors of these genes, and that's why we don't all look the same. For example, I might have an instruction booklet that shows how to build a red A-wing starfighter. And you might also have an instruction booklet for how to build an A-wing starfighter, but yours might be blue or green. The different versions of genes are called alleles. This might seem like a lot, so let's review. Your DNA, the little instruction books for you, are made up of a lot of little instruction books called genes, which come in different variants, which are called alleles. Alleles are just different versions of genes. Now to add to that, your genes, the little instruction books that made, make you, aren't in just some big instruction book pile somewhere, but are gathered together in a series of anthologies of books called chromosomes. Each kind of chromosome contains lots of different genes that code for lots of different kinds of things. Even though each chromosome contains lots of different genes, you don't have just one chromosome. In fact, you've got 23 completely different kinds of chromosomes that contain completely different kinds of genes. And then on top of that, for each one of those 23 chromosomes that you have, you've actually got two. You've got a pair of each of your 23 kinds of chromosomes. This gives you a total 
of 46 total chromosomes. You got one copy of each of your chromosomes from your mom and one copy from your dad. Because you have two copies of each kind of chromosome instead of just one, you are called diploid. Like D-I-ploid means two-ploid. Most cells are diploid. Because your parents were also diploid, they couldn't both give you all of their chromosomes, or else you would have just way too much DNA. Each of your parents gave you only one of each pair of their 23 chromosomes. So they have two of each of their 23, but they only gave you one of each. The process that was used to split up their chromosomes, to go from having 46 to only having 23 to give you, is called meiosis. Meiosis creates cells called sperm and eggs. Sperm are little and have tails, and eggs are huge and generally don't have tails. Both have only one copy of each kind of chromosome, giving them a total of 23 chromosomes each. Because sperm and egg only have half as many chromosomes as a typical diploid cell, they're called haploid or half-ploid. Every now and then, through a magical process I'll let your parents explain to you later, sperm and egg get together. And when they get together, they form a brand new diploid cell called a zygote. At one point, this zygote was you. And the zygote, being diploid, has two copies of each kind of chromosome. One from mom and one from dad. Since the two copies come from different places, there's the possibility that they're exactly the same but there's also a very good possibility that they're not. Looking at the individual genes inside of each one of these little amazing chromosomes of yours, what you might find is that the two genes, the one that you got from mom and the one that you got from dad, are exactly the same. And when that's the case, that's called homozygous. Homo meaning same, and zygous coming from zygote, so same zygote. But they might be different. And when they're different, that's called heterozygous. Hetero meaning different, zygous still meaning zygote. So, different zygotes. And both are possibilities. Homozygotes have two of the same allele. Heterozygotes have two different versions of a gene, two different alleles. To review, your DNA is made up of lots of different genes. All kinds of different genes. And different versions of the same gene are called alleles. Your genes are arranged into big groups, big anthologies of genes, called chromosomes. And you have two of each kind. Having two of each kind makes you diploid. If you only had one of each kind, you would be haploid, like sperm and egg. Sperm and egg are made by meiosis. That was actually the process that split them up. When they fuse and make a new diploid cell, that new cell is called a zygote. If a zygote has two copies of the same allele for a gene, it is called homozygous. If it has two different kinds of copies of a gene, it is called heterozygous. That is everything for this video, but what you need to do now is answer one question. And this is maybe the most important part of this whole video, is that you actually take the time to answer this question. If you're struggling with it, ask questions down in the comments. Other people that are watching this video are going to help you, I'm going to help you. So give it a try. And the answer will be at the beginning of the next video because this is just the first of four videos that will get you from potentially knowing almost nothing about genetics all the way to being a master of genetics. This is the question. What do I mean when I say that a zygote is heterozygous for a gene? And how did it get that way? So one more time, what do I mean when I say that a zygote is heterozygous for a gene? And, how did it get that way? You've got to first write down your own answer, and then you'll check out our next video. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Hang on. Somebody flushed the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what they look like normally.
big instruction book pile somewhere. Every now and then, through a magical process that I'll let your parents explain to you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then. <laughs>